Title and text creation has been redesigned from Pinnacle Studio 24, and titles are now created directly in the timeline monitor, and text is sharper than ever before. With complete keyframe control of position parameters for individual lines, words, and letters. Combined with rotation keyframing and placing moving text behind masks. Or combine titles with graphical elements and save them as editable title presets for use in other projects. Let's take a closer look. We'll start with this clip of the astronauts and create the film title you saw in the intro. Titles can still be created from the menu bar, but there's also a dedicated titles icon on the top bar, so let's click here. This icon will also help you get back to the title options quickly when you need to. Then click Create Title. At this point, make your title clip as long as you need it to be. I'm going to make it the full length of my video clip. Then enter the text. I'll have the words Breathe On on this first line and Mars on the second line. I'll select a font that I like. And I can make the text different sizes by selecting each word and setting a font size for each. I'm also just going to adjust the line spacing so it's how I want it. And give the text some colour. I like to pick some colour from the underlying video clips with the colour picker. And then adjust it slightly so I know the text will be legible. So here, I've basically designed how I want my text to end up. In fact, I'll just tweak the positioning a little by dragging the layer on the timeline monitor. And now I'm going to keyframe how the text enters and leaves the screen via the Motion tab. There's a host of keyframe controls here for position, rotation, etc. But they're also broken down by layer, line, word, and letter. So with layer selected, if I adjust the tilt rotation, I'm tilting everything in this text layer. I've only got one layer in this title clip, but we'll see an example with multiple layers shortly. Let's undo that tilt. If I then select line, both lines are selected by default, but if I just select the first line, then adjust swivel, and then select the second line and swivel the other way, you can see I could keyframe these lines completely independently of each other. The same goes for words. Each word can be manipulated separately. Or the same with letters. And you don't have to choose one or the other. You can have multiple adjustments going on at the same time across different hierarchy levels, which means you can control movement in pretty much any way you can imagine. Let's undo all those adjustments, so I'm back to the title how I designed it. The first thing I want to do is make the letters of Mars appear in sequence, so I'll make sure I'm in the Letters tab and select the M. I'll make sure my playhead is at the start of the title's clip, then I'm going to skip ahead 10 frames with Shift and X, which is where I'll start the animating. So I want the letters of Mars to grow from nothing, but also fade in whilst that's happening. So I'm going to decrease size and opacity to zero, and then turn on keyframing for both. This creates a keyframe at the time that the playhead is on, but also creates a keyframe at the start. So bear in mind, if you forget about this initial keyframe and can't work out why something isn't animating the way you want it, Check what your initial keyframe is doing. Then I'll skip ahead another 10 frames and set size and opacity to 100. And now I have the letter M growing and fading in from nothing. Now I just have to repeat this for the other three letters, but staggered out in time. So I'll go to the first keyframe I set for the letter M, switch to the letter A, then jump forward five frames and set size and opacity to zero and turn on keyframes. By the way, these hollow keyframes just show that other parts of the layer have keyframes at this point. This is useful for time aligning different sets of keyframes. So then I'll jump ahead 10 frames and set size and opacity back to 100. And then I just repeat this again for the letter R. Move five frames ahead, set size and opacity. Jump 10 frames ahead and set size and opacity again. 
and then the same for the letter S. So you can see where this goes. You just keep adjusting your text so it moves how you want it. At the top of each tab, you've got an indicator that shows whether that tab has any keyframes programmed. And you can momentarily turn off any motion parameter alterations to view the currently selected element of the title the way that it was created in the text section. You also don't need to keyframe parameters here. For example, the word on looks a bit weird here because the font size is smaller. Ideally, I'd like that word horizontally centered with the word breathe, so I can just flick to the word tab and shift on up a few notches on the Y position axis and then leave it there without turning on keyframing. Notice I can't get that level of positional control in the text creation section. So now I'll animate the letters of breathe to appear. This time, I'll use different parameters for each letter so it seems a bit less regimented and more organic. And I'll leave 20 frames between keyframes so the letters take longer to appear, but only three frames between each letter starting to appear. I'll speed through this, but you can see that I'm using swivel to help reveal a letter as well as y-axis changes, rotation changes, tilt, or even size decreasing while opacity increases. And then I'll use the words tab to have breathe start in the center. Before moving back to where it was, whilst at the same time on slides out from breathe and fades up. So now I have a pretty solid looking entrance for the title with different elements moving independently of each other. Let's skip ahead to where I've built an exit for them as well. You can see I pretty much just reversed the word on sliding under breathe. And then to conclude the title, I moved Breathe down the display, whilst I also tilted Mars down. And I used an opacity fade out on the layer panel to fade all the remaining text out at once. One bunch of parameters I haven't used here are the pivot point controls. Let's look at this other example. If I view this text clip at the line tab, you'll notice the dark red circle in the middle. This is the pivot point, the axis around which the selected text will rotate. So if I swivel this text, it rotates around the point where the circle is. If I change the pivot point to the left edge and then swivel, it swivels around this new point. Or let's look at the word tab and take the word swivel on its own. Notice the pivot point is now in the middle of this word rather than the middle of the line and this time I'll keyframe the pivot point over time as well, moving from the left edge of the word to the right edge of the word. Then if I keyframe swivel at the same point, the word will swivel whilst the pivot point is also moving. This opens up a whole world of 3D movement for text. Let's take a look at another example. In this one, I've used a bit more rotation keyframing, both on the whole layer and on a per word basis. As the two words split off in different vertical directions, they also flip over and reappear behind the boy in the clip, thanks to a dynamic mask starting at just the point where the text disappears, which isolates the foreground from the background with the titles clip in between. If you need help with dynamic masking, be sure to see our tutorial on this. There's also some blur keyframe at the start on the text section. There's also a drop shadow that's keyframed for when the text is in front of the boy. And a text outline when it's behind him, just to help add a bit of depth and variation to the text. In this last example, there's four different layers on one title clip. 
two of text and two rectangle shapes, which you can create here. Again, I designed the resting position of all the elements here in the text section, and then keyframed the motion with the white rectangle sliding in from off screen on the right. The two words of the subject's name sliding in on the x axis or the y axis while fading in at the same time. And then the blue rectangle sliding out from underneath the white rectangle. And pro tip, if you want to use objects to hide other objects in your animation, remember that the order of layers over here means whichever is at the top here is also at the top here. And you can right click a layer to change the order and send it forwards or backwards. Or do the same at the order icon here. And once you've got a title animation that you like, it's really easy to save so that you can reuse it. Just go to Title and Save Title. Then, when you want to reuse it, just click Load Title. And the content of the text layer are completely editable. I can change the text. And then I might need to adjust the offset controls to maybe realign any of the text. Resize the shape layers if necessary. And then change the color. But importantly, I'm keeping all the animation just how I originally created it. So hopefully, this has shown you how titles and text can be as dynamic as you want them to be in Pinnacle Studio.